Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. We're the Movie Couple. I'm Wendy. I'm Dustin. And this is our non-spoiler review for Eternals. Eternals is directed by Chloe Zhao and stars Gemma Chen, Richard Madden, Angelina Jolie, Selma Hayek, Don Lee, Kumail Nanjiani, Barry Keon, Leah McHugh, Lauren Ridolph, Brian Tyree Henry, and Kit Harington. A group of immortal beings with superhuman powers who have lived secretly on Earth for thousands of years reunite to battle the evil deviants. We have finally seen the Eternals, or should I just say it's called Eternals, not the Eternals, but it's hard to say. It's hard to say without, without the, the, the in it. <laughs> but nonetheless, you guys have probably seen most of our trailer reactions. If not, I'm going to link it for you right up here so you can check them out. Um, and before we dive into this non-spoiler review, keyword is non-spoiler. Mm -hmm. So if you have already somehow seen anything whether it be the movie itself or heard word of it somewhere else give me that hush hush right here on this channel uh in this video so please don't spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen the film yet the film at the taping of this review isn't even released it's coming out november 5th and we want everybody to go in and be fully surprised by whatever you may be seeing uh in the movie so you won't find spoilers here and if we see any spoilers in the comments we don't make a habit of deleting comments, uh, but we don't. We want to keep it, uh, you know, secret. So, out of respect for everybody who has not seen the film, please don't do that thing in the trailer. Don't be a jerk. That spoilers do. That spoilers do. Don't do it. Okay, so let's talk Eternals. Directed by Oscar-winning, uh, Academy Award-winning director Chloe Zhao. So we all knew that this was going to be a beautiful film. You know, she has an eye. She has a particular style in capturing. Um, film. So I remember kind of remember seeing her being announced at Comic-Con. I was like, well, what an interesting choice for a Marvel film. And I feel like when we saw the trailer, you can really see her visuals and kind of her style come through in those trailers. Alone. Yeah, and not just in the trailers. We saw little featurettes and we saw her working behind the scenes and it just looked beautiful beautiful all the visuals all the colors i thought was done i mean just in the trailers alone was done amazingly well and it did very much hold up when we saw it on the big screen it still was stunning and beautiful absolutely now this uh, movie is a pretty long one not the longest no not the longest in all of the mcu no, I that believe goes that to was, Endgame. yes and that there was a reason why it was long <laughs> but it was still it's still pretty long at i think two and a half hours obviously that includes uh the credits and whatnot but i think the reason for that is granted our heavy hitting comic book readers are going to know exactly who the Eternals are and what they do and the history. Um, I actually made myself read the Neil Gaiman because you guys have suggested like there's a Kirby one and then there's the Neil Gaiman one and then a lot of you guys um, and I know Kirby was like the original one, yeah. but a lot of you guys recommended the, the game and run. So I was like, okay, let me read that first and then I'll do the Kirby one. So I'm currently just barely diving into the Kirby, but I did finish the Neil Gaiman run before seeing the film. That, so that gave me a little bit more of an understanding to who the Eternal are and the comics and, and yeah. all of that. And Dustin had a little and bit of And I actually went, well. I didn't know that much at all. You actually well, I knew a, little knew bit a more. lot more going into this movie. So I was actually just really excited to learn about these characters, to find out their relationships, to find out how Marvel was going to weave them in into the big MCU um, universe. And honestly, I was actually, that was one of my big concerns was how are they going to do this? We already have this huge 25 movie universe <laughs> and they're going to now add this huge group of superheroes yes. into it. And I think that adding all of these characters in was really something that um, this movie was going to be its biggest hurdle. Yes, it's definitely a really ambitious uh film for marvel within the mcu because there are so many characters it's not mm -hmm. like we're just going to introduce iron man and then we're going to do thor next and then we're going to do this and that and then you bring them all together the eternals don't didn't have that luxury um they all all of them were just like in the movie and, and the movie go. said go so i feel like chloe Zhao said you know what i'm up to the task i think she's a really fantastic storyteller and what i liked about this one aside from her trying to uh, or, or not her but like the story trying to take us on like the most natural beat possible while introducing each of the eternals uh, i think total really um it, it's a very beautiful way to introduce these characters into the mcu and i liked 
that they didn't need to heavily rely on previous MCU characters or like name drops to make this movie. Yeah, and honestly, what they really did end up focusing on was just a lot more of the relationship between each one of these characters. And there is just this depth to each one of them that you had to really be, that Chloe Zhao really had to present to everyone. Who has the closest relationships? Who are connected to who? Who actually has a past romantic relationship? Yes. And it was just a lot to digest. Yeah. But I think she did a great job on being able to dive into how each character feels about each character in this movie. I will say, and I said this in my initial reaction tweet as well, that this is the most different entry in the MCU. Uh, we know the MCU to be, obviously there's gonna always going to be expositions and, and storytelling, but because it's a comic book movie, superheroes are involved, it's usually pretty action heavy. And it's not to say that this movie isn't action heavy, but it does lean towards the more um, storytelling, exhibition side of things, conversational side of things, uh, because it really needed to focus on the relationships between the Eternals um, as they go through history and how, how they deal with conflicts and why they don't interfere. So, so they talk about a lot of that. So there is more talking than usual than an MCU film, but I will say the action scenes are pretty cool because each Eternal has their own individual powers and you kind of see that come together and then you know we see I don't want to say it you know, just in case it's a spoiler in case people know but just rest assured there is plenty of action in this film you're not going to be disappointed in the action it's actually also probably the prettiest fight sequences that I yes. have ever seen and the creatures look really the cool deviants look really the way cool. that they use their powers looks really cool and I really did like the intensity of some of the fight scenes and I you see it in the trailer a little bit with Gilgamesh she's who kind of does that oh um, Gilgamesh boom he pulls out his fist and he's just a powerhouse punch and you're like, yeah! Yeah, if you, uh, the actor who plays uh, uh, Gilgamesh is Don Lee, who you, if you're a fan of Train to Busan, he's an arm duct tape guy. Uh-huh. Uh, he's just like, just He's also one of my so favorite immortal, Eternals. I yeah, I think he might be my favorite. I went in thinking like, I'm like, so-and-so and so-and-so is going to be my favorite <laughs> for sure because after I read the comic books and I was like, yeah! And then I went in completely changed my mind. I was like, Gilgamesh is my favorite! Kingo may be a close second, mm -hmm. and, and that's played by uh, Kumail Nagiani. So obviously the Eternals, they all have different personality traits, and there's, you know, it's we're making it sound like the exposition exposition conversation it sounds serious but in a marvel film we have a bit of humor and they definitely play up to that and i think a lot of it um kind of you get that from kingo's character you get some of it not all but some of it from uh from fastos as well who's mm -hmm. played by brian tyree henry so the there is a lot of relationship that i really really enjoyed however i do feel that and i hate to say it like this but Two and a half hours was not enough for for a solo movie for yeah. uh, Eternals because there it's it's dense. There's a lot of history because they're not just like, oh, we 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 hi, we just entered the MCU like to us, but they've existed for thousands of years. So there's there's a lot of history to cover, and they have to jump between um, back and forth from present day to past you know they go all the way back to like i don't even know i think like babylon or even earlier than that yeah i mean like pretty much since the creation of um kind of like, like the beginning of humanity kind mm -hmm. of a thing um and that as i do really much agree is that it did kind of that they, they didn't have enough time no. and i think the problem is is that when they were building these characters when they were building their relationships they did so individually and i really think that it would have behooved the show a little bit the movie a little bit more to kind of focus more on the past when they were together as a group and you could have built their characters more simultaneously instead of first focusing a little bit on this character and then their backstory and then a little bit going into the past and then this character and then going a little bit into their past and then presenting this over here i think if you would have done all of that in the past when they're fighting the deviants building it together and then having I'm um, talking a little bit about their separation and then coming back together right. I think would have made you be able to feel a little bit more with these characters and be able to connect with their storyline when these big character when these big climatic scenes happen because I felt like when those scene the big scenes happened I didn't quite feel as connected to the characters as I should have been and I didn't quite care as much for the characters even though I understood the stakes I understood the epic story that had brought them to this point I just feel like they hadn't quite earned how much I should yes. care about them 
Absolutely, and I, I really agree with that sentiment as well because I felt like, um, and even with like me kind of prepping myself and reading some of the comic books, like knowing the characters going in, I know I wanted to feel a certain way for certain characters and, and you know, really trying to learn and digest what the film was telling me. And like, I, like you said, I got it. I understood what they were doing, but it was hard to feel connected to certain eternal characters. Not yeah. all. There, there are certain ones that I definitely felt for and was connected with. Uh, based on our earlier comments, I feel like you guys are probably gonna know who who some of them may be. But overall, it's again ambitious film, beautifully filmed by Chloe Zhao. It's certainly different from the rest of the MCU, which I really like. I found that really refreshing. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people say, oh, like, oh, it's the Marvel formula. I was like, I think this one breaks. Uh, you know, breaks out of the box as far as like it doesn't follow a specific formula, but still yeah. giving you some of that Marvel flavor that is kind of signature when it comes to these films. Yeah. So with that said, are you ready to give our yeah. rating? Do you want to go first or sure. should I go first? I found this movie that it was still fun. It still had the comedy that a good Marvel movie has. It has good action scenes. I found it epic but dense in some parts, and I also felt that the relationships would have done better if they would have first focused on them as a group and then focus on a little bit more on them individually. Overall though, I still think this is a fun movie to see in the theaters. I would definitely give it a matinee it. Uh, and for me, I think one, visually, absolutely visually stunning. It is a dense story, so just kind of get ready to, and settle into your seat and just let the story take you on the ride. And I also do want to point out, if we, if we forgot to say this, we talked about the Deviants, but I also want to talk about the Celestials. They look really, really oh cool. Oh my gosh, just, they look gorgeous. They actually, like the scale of what they made them look like, when I saw it, I was like, whoa! <laughs> it was very, very impressive. Um, leans a little bit heavier on the expo exposition parts of it, which I think it is necessary but it failed to make me feel that connection to the characters that I normally would feel in a Marvel film. And my rating for this film is also matinee it. So that's it, you guys. That is our non-spoiler review. Please remember to keep spoilers out of the comment section. If you found out about it on social media, we are so sorry that you had to find out that way. That really sucks. And no one else should have to um, experience the film going in, like having to know the spoilers. So please do your part. Be respectful of the people who have not had a chance to watch the film. And please don't put spoilers in the comment section we will be having our spoiler review that's going to be available for our tier three dollar tier uh, patreons so uh, you can check out the link for that in the comment section sorry in the video description below but the spoiler review will not be up until after the movie's release so if you so look for it right now november 5th. yeah after november 5th it'll come up if you look for it now you're not gonna find it don't forget to like share and subscribe and we will see you in the next video bye